Ladies, welcome to the podcast where we're all friends because we love all things Bravo, pop culture, and can't stop talking. Having too okay. much fun. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yes. Bravo should be fun. I'm Caitlin Marshall, your host here at Besties by Bravo. Allegations, allegedly allegations. Where we're in a safe space to gossip, share our thoughts, and opinions. That girl's a liar. That girl's a liar. <laughs> about the Bravo celebrities, shows, and celebs we love, hate, and, and love to goes, hate. Oh, suddenly now you're so religious. So be cool. Don't be all uncool. He went on a podcast claiming he had a threesome with two women from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Immediately, I was like, I wonder if it's Brandy and Carlton. Because sometimes things may get a little, well, ridiculous uh, oh my god i'm sorry there's a spider <laughs> that is coming down i'm hold on hold on ah! oh my god oh my god Are you, it's like the blair witch project or something. Yeah. <laughs> all you can hear in the background yeah. is oh my god has anybody seen my ring oh my god <gasps> I don't want to ruin the party or anything. <laughs> my ring. Oh my God. Can you look on the floor for my ring? God, don't get to kill me. Don't mess with me because I will come. What? <laughs> oh. Feel free to leave that in for whatever entertainment purposes. I'm so glad you're here to enjoy the fun. So thank you for joining me on Besties by Bravo. Hi, besties. Thanks for joining today. I'm so glad to see y'all. Well, you know, it's it's been a rather quiet week for Bravo. That means there must be a storm brewing, right? Well, sort of. Uh, let me just start with what I just saw on Instagram right before I hopped on here. Can we get a protective order for Kim Zolciak's phone? from Kim Zolciak herself, please, because she literally posted another one of her clickbait posts. Now, mind you, I only click on the link so that y'all don't have to because she gets paid per click. And Kim had posted this photo of Brielle hooked up to all these tubes in the hospital. <laughs> and I thought, well, that looks like an older picture of Brielle because... She looks a little different now. And uh, lo and behold, this photo and this whole link that it goes to is from 2022. Brielle's fine for the most part. I swear to God, I, I think I need everyone to realize at this point that Kim Zolciak is never going to post anything that she's not making money from. Because there was a, a post she did, a video, a reel, what have you, uh, I would say a week or two ago, where she's like getting all these injections, including Botox in her traps to relieve some tension, I believe. And everyone's in her comments going, how do you have the money for this? I thought you didn't have any money. She doesn't, y'all. She got paid for that. What med spa was like, hey, you know who would be a great spokesperson? What influencer could we get in the Atlanta area? Oh, I know Kim Zolciak. <laughs> she did not pay for those injections. Okay. She didn't. She didn't. Uh, so I have to go on to some heavier news here because, and I say heavier, it starts out light and then it takes a turn. So I will be having to put in a trigger warning here. Let's start with the fact that Jeremy Maddox, Ariana Maddox's brother, got engaged to his girlfriend, Rachel. And the thing is, he told Us Weekly the reason why he doesn't speak to Ariana nowadays. And his uh, alleged claims are that Ariana would have, quote unquote, microaggressions toward his girlfriend, Rachel. And he says that it came to a point where he had to choose between Ariana, his sister, and the woman he planned to be his wife and spend forever with. <clears throat> well, there were some things I was just like, there's something about Jeremy I'm forgetting. Hey. Trigger warning. Okay. Here's your trigger warning. 
Jeremy Maddox, before he was on Vanderpump Rules and before he moved in with Tom and Ariana back in that apartment that you couldn't have the microwave and the air conditioner, the box unit on at the same time, he was arrested for domestic violence in 2011. A woman who he was dating that was 19 years older than him. Now, I heard it was a high school friend's mother, but that's totally alleged. I don't know. Regardless, she was 19 years older than him. And they'd been dating for a year when in 2011, she filed an order of protection against him and said that the abuse had been going on for three and a half months. Then an incident, and this incident that caused the order of protection to be filed, oh man, it involved him throwing a beer can at her and driving. She was in the passenger seat and he was just being very physical with her. I don't want to go into too much detail because, again, I don't want to trigger anyone beyond, you know. Ugh. It continued after they got out of the car and... Well, after the temporary restraining order was placed, he violated it only 10 days later when he allegedly texted her that he knew where she would be and he threatened to hurt a quote-unquote male acquaintance that she had with her. Five days after that, the case was dropped and his girlfriend dissolved the restraining order. So they got back together, in other words. And in 2012, he was arrested for battery and DV. He claims that they only had a verbal argument and that there was no physical altercation in this incident. But this incident also involved this woman's dog and him trying to leave with her dog. So, you know, she was like, hell no, young sir. You little whippersnapper. I'm going to, mm -mm, you don't take my dog. And I don't blame her. So, you know, it, it's interesting to me because... I remember at that time when Jeremy came on, it was a whole thing where Stassi was calling him creepy. And Tom and Ariana were right on top of her about saying that. And I understand regardless, you don't want someone calling your brother your family that. And I, I will say I completely understand. However, he's now proving himself to be, I'm not saying creepy, but something other than what we thought. And yes, he did have Ariana's back when Scandaval happened and all of that. But that's what you do if you are siblings or family and you are not, you know, no contact, what have you. Uh, you know, uh, leading in with that as well, I'm going to do a video on this on TikTok. You know I will. But I feel like we have more evidence or more clues that Ariana would most likely not be coming back as a full-time cast member if Vanderpump Rules gets a season 12. And it's because her boyfriend, Daniel, she did this interview with Us Weekly, and she said that she did not think Daniel would be coming back for a season 12, that it was really him doing her a favor coming on the show with her because it is her life, and he was a major part of, still is, a major part of her life, and they couldn't just pretend he didn't exist on the show. And it's really looking like something about her is not going to happen with Ariana and Katie you know, Giorgio and I talked about this last week on Thursday, and I I was a little surprised by some of what Giorgio had said, and I was like, whoa, caught off guard. Didn't realize that the chef, Penny, the CFO, CFO, COO, see, now I'm adding too many letters like Katie was in that interview at the beginning of the season. But that being said, there's something happening there that is not the something we thought it was going to be about her. You feel me? Well, also, Shannon Bedore went on the Jeff Lewis podcast and because, she, you know, she's very good friends with Jeff Lewis and it's been all over the place. And some people are really criticizing this episode she did, mostly criticizing her is what I'm where I'm going with that. You know, I I listened and I didn't find anything that was worth coming after Shannon the way a lot of people were and them saying, oh, this wasn't a good look. But, you know, she was trying to be very careful and insinuated that, yes, after she was asked if this lawsuit that John filed against her for the $75,000 regarding the facelift was maybe Alexis's idea. 
anyone with a brain, two eyes and ears, whether any part of those are functioning at a normal level or not, can tell you most likely it was Alexis's idea. Alexis said, um, no, I want you to get that money back. We don't like Shannon, this and that. You know, you know, come on, come on, come on. Now we have Vanderpump Rules in the Valley airing tonight. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting as well to me because I'm trying to gauge exactly what the deal is with Jax and Brittany. You know, you're re I read blinds that say, oh, Jax was at his bar saying this and that, that he doesn't ever want to get married again. And their relationship deteriorated. De See, here I go again, not being able to speak. <laughs> it's, you know, good thing I don't have a mic in front of me pretending as though people want to hear me speak. Deteriorated due to COVID. Well, as in, you know, that whole <laughs> real fun time we were all on top of each other, not able to leave our homes or that we shouldn't have been leaving our homes, if you know, you know. But that being said, it sounds like there really is an issue there. Uh, she said on their podcast together when reality hits, basically, Jax, I can't stand you. Oh my God, Jax. You know, the thing is too, and maybe I need to put a trigger warning here. Uh, not maybe I should. I will. <laughs> that there are things that we all forget about Brittany easily. And this isn't me attacking her, but it's something pretty pretty fucked up. She is a Sandy Hook denier or at one point was, and she posted a tweet about it. And if you do some Googling, it's very easy to find. The internet and social media is forever, my friends. And, uh, you know, I, I don't see any good reason for why she would have posted that. So I think it's easy to forget after time how awful those two kind of are. Okay. But speaking of awful couples, <laughs> should we do a little summer house chit chat? I mean, I, I'm ready to do a recap on this because I feel like the last, the last two episodes weren't anything intense and it doesn't have to be, but I do have some thoughts. Y'all know I got thoughts. I've got so many all the time. So many that I don't know what to do with them. Thank God I'm on ADHD medication. Okay. Why don't we start from the beginning? This is episode six, I believe, for season eight. Start your engines. Okay, babe. Babe. Start your engines, babe. So at the point we pick up, Sierra is like fully turning into a <laughs> full-blown Southern mama telling these boys to get their asses downstairs for dinner. I've been cooking in here. I've been cleaning. I have green beans. I have chicken fried steak, which by the way, a homemade chicken fried steak, let me tell you, is so good. And now I'm like, great. I'm going to have to go make one tonight. No one get excited. I'm not doing it tonight. I've done it before, but <laughs> I don't have the time. Anywho, uh, Amanda's telling Sierra that the reason Kyle isn't downstairs yet is because he's curling his hair. God, you know, Kyle, the mullet. Oh, I'm so glad to see on the after show. It's not there anymore, which by the way, let me make a note. I either, I, I'm pretty sure I've said it here and I said it on TikTok. Yay. That the after shows are going to end up most likely replacing watch what happens live. I I'm telling you because we got our very first episode of the summer house after show. I think Andy is ready to spend time with his children, regardless of these lawsuits, all this reality reckoning bullshit. <laughs> Let's be real. Okay. I, because also, you know what Bethany tweeted? Of course it was April fool's day. Wasn't it? Ooh, see, this is why I refused to go on social media yesterday. I refused to post anything. I refused to read anything because I was like, all these people, I'm such an April Fool's Scrooge because I'm like, if you are posting like news type of stuff, even if it's gossip, don't be trying to fool me with some, ugh, I hate that. I hate that. Because they always, like people will always post something that you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Like, 
I'm a huge book lover as in I am obsessed with reading. Like if y'all haven't read Fourth Wing, the way I'm devastated, I finished the second book and probably will have to wait until 2025 for the third. I'm furious, furious, okay? And A Court of Thorns and Roses and someone in, uh, yes, I'm in a... <laughs> I'm in a court of thorns and roses Facebook group and someone posted these assholes a thing and they lived in Australia. So for them, it was already April Fool's Day. But for us Americans, it was not yet April Fool's Day. And they were like, oh, look, here's the next book in the series. And it was a joke. So many of us Americans were like, why? Why? So anywho. <laughs> digressing <laughs> in the kitchen craig goes over and touches jesse's shirt and is complimenting it and then tells him you're gonna get touched a lot by boys and girls i, I tell me you were not dying <laughs> because little did craig know that literally he just gave a full callback that tied a lot of stuff together because the camera pans over and zooms in on page immediately and it's like really because he's been touching other people too without asking kyle finally shows up to dinner after everyone is waiting for him and Lindsay cheers you know has a cheers that she holds up her you know rosé because that's her thing rosé Yes. And she's like, honestly, cheers to me and Sierra. And to be honest, and they agree that they worked very well together in the kitchen. And Amanda wants to play a game. Amanda, stop playing the games. Because I, I, I love how everyone else was kind of like, Amanda, we're not playing your game. You can start your game off by playing it. But uh, she's the only one that played the game. Because she was like... I want to play a game where everyone shares the best part of their week. She, she goes, I'll go first. Kyle left. <laughs> and Paige is cracking up. So is Craig. And Jesse just is like, the worst part of my week is that I didn't get to see Kyle. So Lindsay asks Jesse how many dates he went on that week. And he says three and a half. He says the half was him cooking dinner as a date at his apartment. And I agree with everyone else at that table. That is more of one and a half than it is a half. No, that is like a thing. Okay. You bring someone into your own home. You had to clean uh, and cook and buy ingredients says. So uh, he says that he went on a date with four different women that week. This is why. The men, and now I'm not trying to be rude, but men who are tall like that and overly confident, I hate you <laughs> because that's the shit you do. I'm sorry. You do. You do. And you wonder, gosh, why won't anybody settle down with me? Oh, because you're doing that. I understand being proactive. There's nothing wrong with being proactive. But like if one of the women came in and was like, oh my God, I went on like four dates this week. And one of them was where I cooked dinner for him at my apartment. Everyone would have been like, holy shit. Are you okay, babe? Do you have a crisis? Are you okay? There would have been a lot, a lot of slut shaming. Am I right? <laughs> I know I am. It's fine. You don't have to tell me. Well, they ask him if he wants to commit. And he's like, yeah, to the right girl, sure. And they ask what the top three things he's looking for outside of looks are. One, she has to be smart. Two, care about things going on in the world. And three, be organized. And by organized, he means he makes big decisions well. And he's tired of making little decisions all day. Like, yeah, he'll pick the restaurant, but he wants his girl to order for them. <laughs> I... You know what? I'm I'm okay with ordering because I know what I want to eat because you know I looked up the restaurant's menu before I got there. Okay. But I'm not going to be held responsible for you not liking what I order for you. So no, be a big boy, put your big boy briefs on and you go ahead and order for yourself pumpkin, okay? God. But yes, yeah, Sierra and Pager immediately like, no, uh uh uh, don't like that. And then Kyle, who is clearly already wasted, okay, he goes, <laughs> so let me ask you, now that you know Paige doesn't want to do the ordering, do you want to rethink how hard you were hitting on her the first couple of weekends? Okay, the look on Paige's face. She's like, mm, oh my God, oh my God, yes, 
messy. I love it. She is thrilled. I mean, she is like, oh, <laughs> she could not be happier. <laughs> but Jesse's like, all right, let's air that out. Go ahead. Sure. And Craig at first has the most perfect response because he goes, she's a pretty girl. I would too. And then he follows that up with, you don't want to date someone that wouldn't get hit on. And I don't know. I'm just kind of it's like laughing because something about it is also is quite obnoxious. But I also just love how they looked at each other and loved the messiness of this. You know what I'm saying? Like I just something about it. I was like, oh my God, I can see you guys as like, you know, a couple in your 50s giving each other, you know, ribbing each other like, oh, so-and-so's son thinks you're hot, Paige. And I just felt it was cute. I'm sorry, but I do. But Amanda, on the other hand, is looking like she's going to commit a murder, which actually she puts voice to by saying, why would you do that to Kyle? Because Kyle also says, I'm jumping ahead. Kyle also says that he thought this was going to be a funny way to break the ice and tells them that Jesse told him Paige is his type. And Amanda's just like, <laughs> why would you do that? The way that I'm going to murder you in your sleep tonight, you have no idea what's coming for you. Kyle's like, Amanda, it's funny. Will you relax? You're like wound up like a ball of yarn. What's your problem? You've been giving me nonstop shit ever since I walked in the house. Aside from that one kiss you gave me. Ay, ay, ay. So Paige gives Amanda the out of the situation by saying she's going to go get changed. Amanda's like, I want to see your outfit. So Craig comes into the closet where Amanda and Paige are figuring out the clothing options. And he's just like, wow, y'all think of the most absurd, absurd thing to say to someone. And then it's just like, go. And Paige is just cracking up. And she's like, that's what our dinners are like, chicken. Chicken. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just so like confused. Why what is it about chicken? Is it a is it a barnyard animal thing? So like cuz a lot of barnyard animal nicknames would be very offensive, which I don't know if y'all watch 90 Day Fiance, but that's like that guy who is marrying uh he's oh gosh, where is he from? I think he's from South Korea and he's marrying he was marrying a girl from like Kansas or something and he calls her Piggy. And she was already like insecure about her body shape. And he thought it was so cute to call her Piggy. And she was clearly bothered by it to the point where her father's like, I don't like you calling my daughter Piggy. Anyway, now that my brain, God, I swear I took my meds today. <laughs> Unhinged. Okay. So downstairs, Kyle's asking Jesse why he thinks Amanda reacted the way she did. And he thinks that Amanda's just looking for a reason to give him a hard time. And Jesse tells him it was a little outrageous to call him out in front of Craig and that he loves him and thought it was funny. But, you know, dude, <laughs> dude, bro, <laughs> brosif, <laughs> broheem, why? But also kind of funny, but also like <laughs> if I didn't know you, I'd kick your ass type of thing. Which also let me say that I feel that Jesse is perfect for this show. Even if he annoys me a bit as in just the type of man he is, it doesn't mean I don't like him. I don't know him, but I, I feel like he's perfect because he's clearly game for the messy moments, the pettiness, and he doesn't take it too incredibly hard so far or get super emotional thus far. But I do really think Jesse and West are the best fits we have had for this show as newbie guys. We've brought in great women. But it's it's been a hard time with the men. And these two, fantastic. No notes as of now. <laughs> then Kyle's like sitting in, I don't know, it's like a tea and crumpets room or a sunroom or something. And Amanda comes down and she's like ready to hulk on him fully. She goes up to him and she's just laying in, just fully laying into him. She's like, why would you say that shit, Kyle, about Jesse? And she's telling him that everyone is talking about it being so fucked up for calling him out and that it's embarrassing. Uh, but Kyle is trying to turn it around so that he doesn't have to take any responsibility. And it's just like, Amanda, what is your problem? Because again, he's wasted at this point. 
She's telling him he looks like an asshole and that she's so mad. No, I'm mad. No, I'm so mad. I don't even want to go out now. And he's telling her, you know, there's so much more important shit you should actually care about. I'm like, oh, like, yes, yes. Is Amanda overreacting? Yes. But it's not just about what he said. It's also that he's already wasted and being such a messy bitch. <laughs> Come on, dude. And she tells him he needs to have some respect for people. And all he can say is, okay, well, you're literally in, I don't even know what world right now. Use your words, Kyle. Use your words. Because you were full of them at dinner. Just like Amanda says later on, use those little ears of yours, Kyle. Amanda's walking into Club Send It, as in the living room, the second living room, <laughs> the front living room, formal. <laughs> dare I say. And she's like, oh my God, I just like, I can't do this with him. And Craig, our little gossip queen, Craig, <laughs> he runs into he and Paige's room and he's like, chicken, Amanda and Kyle are screaming at each other. And in confessional, Paige says, Really, that at surface level, yes, Amanda is mad about Kyle running his mouth, thinking he's being funny, but that it's actually deeper and more about what Kyle said about her a few weeks ago to Paige regarding, you know, not thinking Amanda was ready for kids. Okay. Kyle will not stop talking about it. He's now in this space where he's spiraling enough from Amanda being so mad at him that he's like, well, I got to fix this or I got to make her look more stupid than I do. So he, again, brings it up again when he's standing there with Jesse, West, and Craig. <laughs> he's like, they, they literally say to him, bro, like she's, Amanda is literally crying about this over there. So then Jesse says in confessional that he had no malintent, so he doesn't feel bad for flirting with Paige. She's cool and hot and taken, which, you know, I feel like those are some of the major key points that he looks for in a woman. And it's funny because it happens again later on. Okay. So at the bar, Lindsay and Kyle decide they're going to go to the bar to talk. But before we get to that, we see Sierra West and Jesse venture out. And Jesse is telling a woman who they barely blurred her face. Barely. I normally you can't tell what someone looks like when they do this, but no, you could listen. <laughs> if you know her, you know, it's her. I'm sure because he's saying to this woman like, Oh yeah, you know, we, we have a, we're having a party at our house. And she's like, really? Can we come? And his next question, the next thing out of his mouth is how married are you? Well, <laughs> Yes, sir, if she's if she has told you she's married and she's wearing a ring, just, dude. Okay, so Lindsay and Kyle over at the bar. He asks the bartender to put some gin in his lover boy. I would like to know how these people are able to bring outside drinks into bars. I mean, it's bizarre to me. I I don't know, but I think maybe it's because they were. Like, okay, we're going to have our product placement and we're promoting this space because it was some sort of Christmas in July bar where they were all in Santa hats, which made this conversation at the bar even more unhinged by way of both of these people wearing Santa hats, okay? So again, vomit at gin being put in Loverboy. I don't know. Maybe it's just that I don't drink gin enough to know that maybe it would be decent in it. But Loverboy is a, it's not a spiked seltzer. It's a spiked tea at least the ones I've tried. So it's not, it's not like a white claw, which by the way, can I tell you all something very embarrassing? You ready? I applied to be a brand ambassador like earlier this year for Loverboy. I never heard back. Kyle, why do you hate me? Is it because I make fun of your mullet? Because I can't not make fun of your mullet. You flip it out at the end and shake it around like your name is Tammy from the trailer park. And you look like you're supposed to have a Virginia Slim tucked behind your ear while you have one in your fingertips. Anyway, that must be why. Surely, that's the only reason why. Because I make fun of Kyle. <laughs> so, Lindsay tells him that every time she has gin, she has these extreme emotions no matter what the emotion is. If it's happy, it's happy. Sad, it's very sad. 
No. Girly pop. Baby girl, honey bun. No, you're that way with all alcohol. Not just gin. Okay. So Kyle brings up their conversation at Cowfish and that his main takeaway of that conversation is that she told him he chooses sides and that Kyle never has her back. And he wants to make sure he hears all sides. And let me tell you, at this point, I do not know how many lover boys Kyle has had. However, I do know that he is really slurring his way through this conversation. And he's also, you can see in his eyes for a few moments there, like, oh shit, I just made things worse. Mm -hmm. He goes, as friends to both of you, I, 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 I hear the pain in both of your voices and my two cents from, from my perspective, from his per perspective is look, ever since I got serious with Amanda, he's wanted a relationship. He's told me that for years. And then he tells her that Carl is just tunnel vision mode, just trying to get this wedding to happen. So basically, <laughs> Kyle is saying that the reason Carl wanted to settle down with Lindsay is because he saw Kyle do it. No, I, I don't see that as being the actual reason, but I do see him going, well, even Kyle is settling down. Even Kyle. So maybe I should. Okay. And Kyle goes on to say that he's basically so committed to seeing this through that he's pushing through some of the red flags. And then you see the look on his face and he's like, oh God, I shouldn't have said that. Backtrack, backtrack. Not even like red flags, some, some of the hardships. And she's asking what he means by being so committed to see it through. And if he wants the marriage more than the actual relationship. And Kyle is looking at her with this like dead eyed, like, uh, face. <laughs> like, uh, is that what I just said? I'm not even saying right now. And he's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. But Carl loves you and wants he wants them to try to work out everything and work through some of this stuff. And Lindsay tells him that if she has one sip of alcohol and has any emotion other than happy, then it's a problem. I understand what she thinks is the problem, but it's not like Lindsay just has strong emotions and talks about that. No, she really, like, when she gets to that activated point, homegirl goes for the jugular, okay? And we all know that. It's one thing to go to dinner and have two glasses of wine, which to me is a pretty boozy dinner if I'm having two glasses of wine, and then, you know, slowing it down from there. But no, it's, it's a different type of thing. It's a different type of pace because Lindsay's not... I don't think Lindsay knows the difference between a relaxing drink and a just calm, let loose, enjoy yourself, and a send it, see you tomorrow drink. You feel where I'm going with that? So Kyle points out that basically, oh, I'm sorry. So she says that he is questioning how much she's had to drink all the time, as in Carl is constantly questioning her that. And it's when she says, <laughs> oh my God, I keep jumping ahead. I'm so sorry. She then says that if she has something else in her when she's drinking and that if she doesn't act like a Stepford wife, he can't handle it and is constantly questioning how much she has had to drink. And that if he's going to judge and question her, then she's going to do the same thing to him and question what he's doing if he's so perfect. And it's when she says this, though. Mm. Why do you care so much that I'm drinking alcohol? Because it shows, girl, that you still don't grasp the point that it's not about you just drinking alcohol. Again, it's about more than two or three drinks. It's about like 10. And Kyle points out that she basically is just giving it right back to him, like tit for tat, meh, 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 type of thing. And she says that she's, I'm like, yeah, so you want to yell at me for drinking when I'm not the one who has a problem? Then I'm going to start picking apart what you're doing. That was a yikes. That was a yikes, Lindsay. Yes, Carl had a problem, and yes, he was a hot freaking mess. But he is not that way now. And someone who has been fighting their way through addiction 
needs you to do your best to see the work they're doing now. That's part of why they make the amends and all of that. It's hard to do for those who have been on the receiving end of terrible behavior, but Okay, I'm back. Don't know what happened. <laughs> you know, Mercury in retrograde, friends. That was a, a scary moment where I went, oh my God, I disappeared. So I'm back. Okay. Anywho, <laughs> like I said, Mercury in retrograde. Technology, don't do that again to me. Anyway, so the thing is, if Lindsay doesn't want to be in a relationship with someone who is going to be questioning her drinking, then maybe she shouldn't, one, be in a relationship with someone who's sober. And two, maybe Carl shouldn't be in a relationship with someone who's drinking. God, it's like, it's almost as if we know something's coming. <laughs> but yes, she does admit that it's not fair that she does the tit for tat and tells Kyle she doesn't really want to talk about it anymore because she's tired of crying about the same things over and over. She, I want to have fun tonight. Okay. So after they get back from going out, the married woman that Jesse met is telling him she's going to try and see if her friends want to come over to their place. And he's acting all upset because he's like, he wants a girl to get to know, but, you know, not just hook up with because he really wants to have a family. And then he says he doesn't want to be 40. Eyes are on Kyle. <laughs> And wanting to start a family. And Kyle's like, that's exactly how I was feeling at 33, not 30. Shocking. But also, three years. Wow, that's a huge difference. Uh, the next morning, Lindsay goes into Sierra's room where West and Jesse are in her bed. And they're all cuddling and being goofy. And Jesse FaceTimes Carl. And, you know, he's just wanting to see when Carl is coming because remember, Carl decided he was going to try and break up the Friday night fights by coming in only on Saturday. And also, I think he told Lindsay that it was a whole thing of like wanting to rent this vehicle for the race day, what have you. And so Jesse FaceTimes him and Lindsay leaves the room immediately. And they're all three gossiping, saying that they think Lindsay doesn't want to talk to Carl. And Sierra is going like, West, if you ever did that to me. But also, how do you know that she wasn't just on the phone with him? <laughs> Why does she need to be there for the FaceTime? Whatever. Anyway, Paige, Amanda, and Craig are in bed. And this sounds so like not what it actually was. <laughs> all these pairs of three in beds, but I swear, not like that. And Paige ends up looking at Amanda and she's like, um, I've never said this before, but I feel bad for Lindsay. And they agree that Lindsay throws low blows, but she's upset about deeper rooted issues. No kidding. And what their whole thing is clearly is about how, I guess, Carl and Lindsay, according to Lindsay at that time, were not having sex more than two, I'm sorry, more than once every two weeks. And it's interesting because on the after show, Carl did say that he believes they had sex one time that whole summer and once at the shared house. For a couple that is at a healthy age about to get married, it, it is concerning. But I also wonder if that has to do with him coming into his sobriety because that's a lot of that's something that a lot of people struggle with is being intimate again after becoming sober because they didn't have the inhibitions whenever they were on drugs or drunk. And it becomes a whole new thing that they don't know how to handle. So, yeah. But meanwhile, downstairs, Lindsay is telling Jesse that she's thinking of making her wedding hashtag, hashtag from hubby to wifey. I kind of liked it, to be honest. But it's interesting because the hashtag literally is only about her. So back in Paige's room, she's saying that Lindsay needs a friend who can say, if you don't want to do this, as in get married, you don't have to, which I guess is what she did for Amanda when she was marrying Kyle, <laughs> which someone, thank God, at least asked Amanda if she was certain. And I'm still wanting to ask Amanda if she's certain. I don't think Amanda is still certain. <laughs> so Sierra and Craig end up going to the store together and they talk about Austin and West. And she says she does like a goober, which is pretty much Southern for goofball. 
last I recalled, the definition of a goober is actually a pile of peanuts, which seems like an accurate description for Austin Kroll. <laughs> Anywho, she says that it's hard with, with the Austin of it all because with it being on TV, you can't live it down and that people will still come up to her and call her an idiot and dumb, which she says are the things you already think about yourself after that whole fiasco. Now, look, that's screwed up. Okay, leave her alone <laughs> for crying out loud. The only part that she was actually being not wise about was when she threw the wine glass at Danielle, when Danielle was sticking up for Lindsay at dinner that one night, when Sierra went in on Lindsay about the Austin kiss and everything, which I'm sorry, Lindsay and Austin both knew what they were doing and knew that they were being complete assholes at that party, at Lindsay's birthday party that summer. So no, we... The summer before last, yeah, we're not doing that. That's okay. Two years ago, we're gonna let it go. She Sierra just doesn't want to get embarrassed again, and that's why she's taking it slow with West. But this is this. So Craig tells her he would have warned her about Austin, but that they didn't know each other that well, so he couldn't. So on the after show, she and Paige are sitting there, and Paige is like, "No, no, now wait a minute. He is so." full of shit. This is absolutely not true. He, and they both agreed that he was one of the biggest ones egging it on. That was just him trying to get a cop out after Austin, you know, screwed her over and screwed someone over in general all over again. Cause that's just what Austin seems to do. During all of this, Kyle is back at the house being a messy bee again, telling West all about Austin and Sierra, obviously, and West even said on the after show that he was so sick of hearing Austin's name, but that he did meet him out at one point and said, yeah, he's a cool dude, whatever. But he just did not care and was so sick of hearing the name Austin. I don't blame him. So Paige is talking with the girls at the party. We get to the party, I should say. And she's talking with the girls at the party about Craig contributing to her apartment. And she tells us in confessional about a time she had this boyfriend that had booked a trip for them to LA and she wanted to change the flight. But he told her basically that she didn't pay for it. So the day you pay for it is the day you can take control over that. Rude. But that's why... She's like, no, I, that's one of my reasons. I don't like feeling like someone can lord something over me. And that's part of why I don't want Craig paying for half of my apartment. Understandable. You know, I, that's, it's hard. It's a, it's a relinquishing of control and it's now having to rely on someone else. I, I hear where she's going with that. But Amanda asks Paige if she thinks it bothers Craig that she doesn't want any of his money. And she's like, yeah, I think it does a little bit. And Paige asks Amanda if she and Kyle had those kind of talks before they got married. And Amanda goes, no, because he was starting a company. In other words, no, Paige, because Kyle did not have any money to give. He was like literally no money to the point where Amanda's parents were the ones pushing for a prenup. <laughs> Remember? So they all start their little races together and West ends up getting hurt enough by his sunglasses, these flame sunglasses, when he takes a tumble that his nose is bleeding and they're trying to be like, oh, Sierra, you should give West stitches. And she's like, first of all, nurses can't give stitches. And she's just like looking at, looking him over, trying to be whatever, you know, not Nurse Nightingale because I'm sure everyone loves to make those those men out there love to make those jokes at her, but, uh, he's fine. Okay. He has like a little battle wound that he puts over his nose. He's okay. And Wes ends up asking Sierra about Austin. And luckily Sierra's wise enough not to give intense details. She just kind of gives the Cliff's notes version of it. And he seems sort of satisfied with it as he's smoking a cigar that Carl brought him. Then while we're still at this party, Craig asks Paige about the apartment issue. And she points out that he owns his house in Charleston. And she wants this apartment to be a place of her own. And that she doesn't like owing people money or like that anyone can call the shots because they pay more. She also tells him she doesn't want him to feel like the only way she'll commit is if he's giving her rent money every month. <laughs> And Paige points out, you know, it's good that they're having, that they're going slow and having these conversations. And in confessional, Paige is like, if 
if this is saying that if she offered to pay half of Craig's rent, he'd be like, what? No, that's crazy. But because the roles are reversed, it's like, oh my God, do you even love him? <laughs> and it's because she loves him so much. She doesn't want to mix things before they're ready, which look, whatever is working for them works for them. Okay. I have a feeling they're going to have one of those marriages that they don't always live in the same home 24 seven. I, and I think that's, what's going to work for them. It's different for everybody, but she's like, Oh my God, put that money to an engagement ring. <laughs> 5.3 carats oval cut. Um, so Amanda and Paige call over Lindsay and they ask Lindsay how she and Carl have been today. And she says good and jokes that Fridays specifically are not their day. Well, Paige tells her then that she appreciates how open and honest that Lindsay was with them in her room the night before. And Lindsay's like clearly not understanding totally why this was such a big deal to them because she's like, was it that intense? And Paige is like, you're getting married in three months and you said you guys don't have sex. So yeah. <laughs> Lindsay says last summer she was just so uncomfortable because there was so much judgment and tension. Yeah. Or maybe you were babe, babe babe, 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 babing all over the house. And people were just like, oh my God, you can be happy, but for the love of God, I would have been annoyed too. Okay. Like happy for him, but annoyed, annoyed. So, uh, then Amanda asks Lindsay if she thinks that maybe they moved too fast or if it was the right thing for her and Carl. And Lindsay tells her that she thinks Carl decided to get in a relationship with her and thought that she was going to change. Hmm. But you did for a moment. You stopped drinking to support him. You did make it appear as though you were going to make some changes. There's a difference between saying someone is just going to change in general or making a few changes. And that was a big change that you did do at the beginning. So just want to point that out. And in confessional, Amanda says that she doesn't think Carl was saying that Lindsay's going to change for me, but rather that because they're in love and getting married, that she'd have more respect for him and treat him differently than she does everyone else. Which, you know, again, this is another thing with the after show that I found interesting is Danielle specifically was like, I understand that because of how she felt that the last summer when she and Lindsay got into it, that Lindsay was treating her like she had watched her treat other people. And it was like, you, I'm the one you don't treat this way. And <sighs> walks like a duck, quacks like one. They're gonna, you know. <laughs> so over at the guy's section. Jesse tells Carl, you know, they missed him last night. And he says that they've been in couples and Carl says they've been in couples therapy and then he's willing to look into anger management. Now, Kyle is looking at Carl when he brings up anger management as though he has literally grown a second babe head on his shoulders. But here's the thing. Okay. Sometimes people truly do not show how angry and intense they can be out in the open, the way their partner can see it. All right. And Carl has a, Carl has a lot of things, a lot of things that he has a right to be angry with Lindsay about. So he very well may be getting to an incredibly furious, intense point when it's just the two of them. I'm sure Lindsay pushes his buttons and he, because there's still the Carl in him that is always going to back, he probably pushes hers too. And then if she's drinking, he knows that's the one thing he has over her in that moment, no matter what, and he uses it against her. And then she's going to use his past against him. It is a sick, toxic cycle. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. So they are saying to Carl that, as in the guys, they don't see him as an angry guy. And Kyle, ever the relationship expert, because you know what? <laughs> He's that guy that got married and now does that whole thing that is where he acts as though he knows everything. And it's very much like, oh, yeah, the old wife. God, she's always telling me to do something, that ball and chain. Ugh. Much in the way that Jax Taylor 
It is about being a parent. Now, they truly think that they are the experts on it all now. Well, you don't know until you get married. It, everything's different. No, it's really not that different, okay? It's just after it, you're like, oh, well, we had this huge, enormous thing that we were looking forward to planning, and now what? It's a big buildup, and then it's the letdown of relaxation is where you should be. <laughs> we now live life. Well, uh, yeah. I don't know where else I was going with that, except that I just know people who are like that, who are like, uh, no, no, you don't understand. Like, if you don't get these type of diapers, man, you're never going to sleep again. Say goodbye to sleep. If you're pregnant, oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's like people like that that scare people off from getting married, having children, if that's what they're considering. But anywho, digressing again. So back over to the girls. Oh, I'm sorry, because Kyle did say... That's where I was going with that. <laughs> Kyle says, man, you know, you get to a point where it builds up resentment and that's the number one relationship killer. Now, he actually is correct. If you look up, I think it's like psychology today, a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists, couples therapists say that the number one killer of a marriage relationship would have you is resentment. Fair enough. So Carl, uh, back to the girls. Paige tells Lindsay that she's never said this before. <laughs> I've never said this before, but I'm very much on your side. Because she, <laughs> she thinks Lindsay is always wrong. And Lindsay is wrong a majority of the time, but like still. And Paige points out whenever, she, whenever Lindsay and Carl get into a fight that everyone is only concerned about how Carl is feeling afterward. Well, it's probably because usually Lindsay's the one who has been openly out of pocket with him in front of everyone. Carl, at least if he is out of pocket out of pocket with Lindsay, does it behind closed doors or at least inside Uber doors. Never a lift because it's not a lift, it's an Uber. Carl is telling the guys that they're like any other couple and that they fight a lot. But he's questioning at what point is it no longer healthy fighting? I'll tell you when. Well before she called you cocaine, Carl. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Craig ends up asking him if there's any possibility of pushing the wedding back. And it's interesting because Carl tells him that one of their first fights about the wedding was that he wanted to do January. Mind you, they were getting married in Mexico. It was going to be warm regardless. And she was heavily opposed to it. What's interesting to me is that they ended up having their original, original, okay, so their wedding date was set for November. They would have only been waiting another two months. What the hell? And we kind of just end with Lindsay saying that, yeah, there are little miniature red flags and, you know, we'll see what happens. Look, I, I cannot imagine the misery of being in the house with those two. Aside from Amanda and Kyle fighting, those two, oh my freaking God. Oh my God. It's, it feels exhausting to me. I want to say hi to some of my friends here in the chat. Oh, hi, Adam. Oh, thank you. The eyebrows. Y'all, I'm feeling weird. I, I'm not allowed to put makeup on them. I got my first tattoo. It was a face tattoo. My eyebrows done. Didn't hurt like hardly at all. It was just like the end after the rubbing and the like thousands of strokes. But I'll tell you something about me. This is how stupid I am. I was like, I walk in, I'm thinking, okay, there's going to be a tattoo gun and all of this. And she's numbed me and I'm waiting and I'm like, oh my God, okay, get ready. And I'm thinking I'm like at the dentist. Like, what is wrong with me? No, it's a pen. It's just like this pen. Shows you how much I know. Such an idiot over here. Uh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> no problem. I will do the Lord's work for you, besties. I will click on the Kim Z links so that we can save a few clicks. Happy to do so. Hi, Tay Tay. Danny, hi. Hi, Ellis. Hi, Robert. Hi, June. Yes, it has, it has been an interesting week. What can I say? Not as interesting as the week before. My God, there was so much happening. But can't wait to see what happens on the valley tonight. Vanderpump Rules, it's that beach day, you know, where apparently Tom Sandoval and Ariana are arguing who owns the dogs more than the other. Like, what the hell? That's that's the point we're at. 
I have a feeling it's going to be that moment when Ariana's like, and if you come after my children, my lawyer will be dealing with you. Yeah. And he's like, your lawyer? That whole thing. But I am kind of dying to see the full meltdown at the end of Girls' Night on the Valley. I'm very excited. What I don't know, I know Giorgio, as of now, is going to be here with me on Thursday live at 3 p.m. I know it can get confusing that Tuesdays I do 3.30 p.m. Eastern, and on Thursdays I do 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm on Mountain Time, so I'm constantly trying to um, go <laughs> say things by other time zones because no one else seems to be in Mountain Time. That being said, I don't know if we're doing the Valley on his podcast tomorrow. I I will find out from him and we'll go from there. But I have to talk about the Valley. And I think y'all are interested. And um, I'm so sorry, June. I don't know if I said hi to you, but hi, June. So glad you're here. Anywho, okay, my friends, do all the things. Leave the five-star review. It literally warms my heart into just a big, mushy ball of marshmallow. And if you could go follow Besties by Caitlin on Instagram and on TikTok and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, the plan for now is to continue going live with y'all Tuesdays and Thursdays. So thank you again for joining and I will see y'all on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.